In this video, I'll discuss stage one of the data collection pipeline, modeling the problem. I'll talk about setting annotation goals, defining annotation tasks, and determining the scope of both the task and the corpus as a whole. A typical data collection pipeline is shown here. We can see that in building a data set, we start out by modeling a problem and then determining our data set specifications. Then we move on to developing annotation schema and collecting annotations before finally evaluating annotation quality. In this video, I'll focus on the first of those steps, modeling the problem. Modeling your annotation problem is a crucial starting point in building your data set because it sets the tone for every other step along the way. In modeling your problem, you need to define a clear annotation goal for your task, as well as your task and data sets overall scope. By defining your annotation goal, you'll have to think about important questions about your research problem as a whole. For example, what are you trying to do with your data set? If you're trying to predict sentiment, for example, you'll probably end up creating a different type of data set from if you're trying to predict sarcasm. You'll want to think about how you're trying to do this. If you're trying to predict sentiment, this might involve deciding whether you're going to predict two classes, positive and negative, three classes, positive, negative, and neutral, or a real valued output indicating how positive and or negative an instance is. Finally, you'll want to think about which resources best fit your needs. For example, if you're trying to predict sentiment, you may not want to collect labels for Wikipedia articles. Instead, fiction literature, op-ed pieces, or social media posts may all be more useful alternatives. A good goal definition should start with a clear, succinct statement of purpose, followed by additional details outlining how you'll achieve that statement of purpose. The statement of purpose itself should generally be no more than one to two sentences describing what you intend to do at a high level. This isn't a research paper, it's a way to organize your thought process as you move more deeply into developing your data set. You may find that as you create your statement of purpose, you realize that your initial plans were too ambitious and that's okay. It's much better to break a task into manageable segments and just focus on part of your problem at first, rather than trying to tackle everything at once and getting overwhelmed. For example, you may initially think it sounds awesome to create a program that can interpret and respond to metaphors, idioms, sarcasm, and jokes, and that would indeed be really cool. However, it would be extremely difficult to create a single data set that could provide all of the information necessary for fulfilling that task. Annotators would have to reliably label a variety of complex rhetorical phenomena, each of which may contain separate subproblems. You would likely have much more success by decomposing your initial goal into separate subgoals that could lend themselves more easily to individual data sets, and then use multiple data sets to later create all of the necessary components of your system. For example, one data set could focus on helping you to create a program that could categorize metaphors into different groups of conceptual mappings, whereas another data set could focus on helping you to create a program that could generate appropriate responses given specific metaphor categories. Here are what some example statements of purpose might sound like for well-known corpora. For the Penn Discourse Tree Bank, we might say that it labels discourse relations between eventualities and propositions in news wires for learning about discourse and natural language. For the MPQA Opinion Corpus, we might say that it labels opinions with characteristic traits for use in evaluating emotional language. Finally, for Time Bank, we might say that it labels times, events, and their relationships in news texts for use in temporal reasoning. Each of these statements of purpose include a clear end task and specific label needs. Once we've finished writing a succinct statement of purpose, we can move towards building a longer task description that lays out our plans a little bit more clearly. In doing this, we need to think about the types of labels we'll need to achieve our task, paying special attention to the delicate balance between informativity and correctness.
Informativity refers to the usefulness of a given annotation for your task. If you're labeling emotion categories, for example, positive and negative would be less informative than happy, sad, angry, surprised, disgusted, and afraid. Correctness refers to the perceived difficulty of the annotation task, which is generally inversely related with informativity, since having more options often makes the task more complex for annotators. Using the labels positive and negative in the previous example would probably result in higher correctness than using six different emotion categories. Whenever you add more label types to your task, you'll want to carefully consider whether those labels are necessary for achieving the plans described in your statement of purpose, even at the expense of possibly reduced annotation reliability. Likewise, whenever you remove label types from your task, you'll want to carefully consider whether doing so would reduce the usefulness of your data set. Informativity and correctness are closely related to project scope, which you'll also need to define when modeling your problem. There are two different types of scope in the context of building a data set. There's the scope of the annotation task itself, and there's the scope of the corpus. The scope of the annotation task corresponds to the ambition of your goal. For example, do you want to be able to predict emotion in any kind of written or spoken input? Or do you just want to be able to predict emotion in posts from the UIC subreddit? The scope of the corpus corresponds to the actual data that will be included in your data set. If you just want to be able to predict emotion in posts from the UIC subreddit, you could potentially just download all posts from the past five years in that particular subreddit and use those. Whereas if you want to be able to predict emotion in any kind of input, you'd want to include a much larger mix of data instances, such as Reddit posts, transcribed conversations, fiction literature, and Wikipedia articles, or perhaps a sample of the common crawl, which is comprised of snapshots of the entire web. In determining the scope of your annotation task, you'll want to define all the different possible categories of relationships you could potentially analyze, determine which of those categories are most relevant to your task, and then think of the classification task you ultimately want to solve. Remember that having lots of classes is not only more challenging for annotators, it's more challenging for computational models. If you don't plan to have a large data set, but you do plan to train a statistical classification model, you'll probably want to keep your number of classes fairly small. In determining the scope of the corpus, you'll want to think about what the potential data sources are for your task, whether a single source would be sufficient for achieving your task goals, and whether your corpus will need to cover multiple text styles or genres. If you do need to cover multiple text styles or genres in your corpus, you'll want to start thinking ahead about whether you might need different annotation guidelines for those different domains.